everybody. My name is Jonathan Reeves from Jonathan Reeves Architecture and today I'm going to be sharing with you a presentation that I developed for the Baltimore Vectorworks Design Summit called Innovative Vectorworks BIM. During the course of this talk I'm going to talk about what is it, what could it be and also a little bit about what you might be missing. I'm going to show you some slides and then I'm also going to run through a number of live projects. But first I'd like to talk a little bit about myself just to introduce myself and what I do. So my background is architecture, <clears throat> my practice is JR Architecture Limited and I've been a practicing architect in the UK with my own practice since 2000. Uh, I'm also an author and recently wrote the Innovative Vectorworks BIM book, hence the title of the talk. And it's a really nice book, it's been well received, um, it's been sort of bought or downloaded over a thousand times and there's some really great hints and tips available so if any of you would like to get a copy of that please do a search on my website and you can download a copy um, and certainly have a look at the hints and tips it will really help you in your use of Vectorworks. So here we see one of the pages from the hints and tips page it's nicely illustrated and um, I think you'll find it very valuable. Okay, so I've basically also been working as a professional Vectorworks teacher and trainer for the last 17 years, as well as a Vectorworks BIM consultant. And finally, I'm actually an authorised partner and reseller for Vectorworks UK. So I'm really proud to be part of that, that team. Now, over the years, um, I've been using Vectorworks for quite a long time. And basically, since university, I've been using it for 3D. Uh, I guess the forerunner to BIM. I started with Minicad 4. Um, some of you may remember if you're old time users and also I guess I've witnessed the growth of Vectorworks over the years and how it's changed. Now to, many, to most extent I've seen the future realised in that the tools and the features that I would have liked to have seen have now been developed into the software but there's always more I guess. And with it you know the possibilities of what we can do and the way we can work and the workflow is you know amazing these days. So within my own practice I always strive to work in 3D as much as possible. Um, I would guess you term it as a, a BIM light workflow in that most of the projects we, we would always use the BIM tools to develop the project and explore the designs in a rapid coordinated fashion. And I guess you know I've been in a very privileged position not only using Vectorworks daily but also having worked as a professional teacher and trainer with really some of the best practices all over the UK and um, you know I learn an awful lot from the people that I visit as well as hopefully giving a lot back and teaching them uh, quite a lot too. So most of you will be aware of what Vectorworks is but let's explore this in a bit more detail. So what is Vectorworks? Well look, put simply Vectorworks really is just a tool okay and as an architect's professional practice Vectorworks is my main tool. Um, I use it for so many things within my practice it really replaces lots of other potential software. However it's not just the toolbox itself like all tools really you're you know you can only get what you need to do from Vectorworks if you use it effectively. So what I'm trying to get to here is while Vectorworks is an incredibly versatile multi-tool and you might think of it a bit like a good old army Swiss penknife. Um, you know, you do have to know which tool does which action. And also, you know how to have to combine them into a various workflow. But for me, it's also important how to access them quickly. And this is definitely one of the things that I teach when I'm doing training. How to work extremely fast, really productively, and kind of get into that design flow state that we all find really attractive when we get there. So you know I guess there's a lot of tools in Vectorworks unless you know which ones to use then maybe there's too many to use effectively. So you know what could Vectorworks be or more accurately what could it be used for? Well as I've said before Vectorworks really is an incredibly versatile tool and it can be used for pretty much anything you can imagine. All of these possibilities are achieved with Vectorworks and some complementary software and definitely training is the key to you know, leverage your skills so that you can do these amazing things. Let's look at some examples in different industries. Um, these are all clients that I've worked with over the years and let's have a little look at how it can be used. 
So I'll start with one of my own projects, which I'm going to elaborate on a little bit more later for a new house. And you can see that, you know, architecture is obviously the core uh, area where Vectorworks is a very, very widely used software, particularly in small to medium sized practices. And of course, um, anybody who's on the Mac platform particularly would find Vectorworks very attractive. It's cross-platform Mac and PC, but you know, it runs beautifully on both platforms. Now, in the field of engineering, Vectorworks is also starting to be more, much more widely used, um, particularly amongst what I call the design-based engineering practices. And here we can see some beautiful drawings and models from Burnt Sienna Structures, uh, an Edinburgh-based engineering company who uh, work with um, Nigel Somner, amongst others, one of my clients. And basically, they produce fantastically clear, incisive, uh, really precise models which really help you understand cost, evaluate and also calculate the required structure. Now changing the topic a little bit here, Vectorworks has a landmark side to the program and you know Vectorworks landmark is great for landscape design, urban design and master planning but it's also really great just down to the garden design level and these were some visuals that I did uh, working with um, Love Your Garden for Alan Titchmarsh a number of years ago and it was a really fun project to do. I had eight gardens to create over eight weeks so really short time scales but super fun. Uh, good good summer of work and um, we created some nice models and rendered. Some of these were rendered using Atlantis at the time but also render works very much in the background. Okay now Vectorworks is also quite widely used in the exhibition design industry and here we can see um, some clients of mine, Dyson, who I've been working with for well over 10 years now and basically what they do um, is have lots of global exhibitions all around the world when we, when we, you know, they launch new products. So they model up these exhibitions in Vectorworks um, quite rapidly. They're able to bring in obviously models of their products, new products coming on, on stream all the time. And they're able to kind of really get a clear picture of visualizing what these uh, exhibitions would look like. And then finally, the drawings can then be taken on to um, construction drawings and obviously to help them with costing and get the project delivered. Here's another field that Vectorworks is very widely used in these days in the retail and store design industry. And another great client of mine, Foot Asylum, um, who sell uh, all sorts of sports gear and particularly footwear and trainers. And what they do is they, they model up all their stores. Um, they're opening in quite a few stores each year. They model them all up in Vectorworks, make sure that all the kit is correct. They do kind of walkthroughs and see if people can get around the store okay. And then, of course, they use the model and the information they've built to actually help them get the store designed and fabricated in you know, a nice, efficient time. So widely used. Now here's an interesting area that I think Vectorworks is really taking off in, um, the film set design industry. And over the last year or so, I've been working um, quite a lot with screen training in Ireland, uh, delivering a fair amount of training to the film industry over there. And they make some amazing shows, you know, think Game of Thrones, Vikings, uh, Badlands, you know, these, these are all shows that are made and produced over there with the design team. And, you know, who would have thought that Vectorworks is often used in the background to create concepts, but also to create um, the actual sort of fabrication drawings and the working drawings behind the sort of sets. So brilliant use. Now, here's a really nice bit of artwork designed by my um, assistant, Kenneth Smith. And you can see he did a lovely job. And he'd only been using Vectorworks maybe for a few months at the time. OK, well finally move on to uh, some digital art so you know this is some art that I did for the chapters in my book so if you do download a, a copy of my book you'll be able to see some really nice uh, digital art and you know it just shows the flexibility of the Vectorworks modeling um, this was combined with Cinema 4D for the explosion effect and then rendered and then you know created some quite fun visuals Okay, now back to architecture again or presentation. So, you know, the beauty with Vectorworks is it's a fantastic presentation package as well as a design and production information package. So when, when we produce our planning applications, you'll see, I'll show you in a minute when we get onto the projects, how we do them. It really is great because you can do it all in one uh, package. You don't have to spend a lot of time opening up lots of files. Okay, so, you know, what might you be missing? Well, 
One thing I have noticed as a practicing architect and Vectorworks trainer is that many designers really are not making the most of the building information or BIM workflows. Partly because they maybe don't have a full understanding of what it takes to work in 3D. But also, um, I think maybe sometimes there's a perception that BIM is for large projects or large practices. And this really isn't the case. So, you know, I find in my own small practice, it's extremely useful. And if you apply BIM workflow creatively, then they can lead to a dramatic increase in productivity both in the design, construction, and particularly the collaboration phase. Okay, so let's have a look at some uh, recent projects that we've been working on at the practice. And I guess this image here really sort of sums up um, part of what BIM's about. Basically, the first goal is you want to be able to model a building or design and produce a set of coordinated information drawings like sections, plans, elevations, maybe even some details from that model. And of course, later on down the line, we can look at things like scheduling. But down at the bottom here, you can see a number of uh, highlighted sort of, I guess, pointers that sort of sum up using BIM with Vectorworks. So very important to get your project set up right, try and use the space tool. Um, BIM is often about managing your data um, we're definitely going to be using hybrid tools, you know, walls, windows, doors, that kind of thing. And as you develop your model, one of the key benefits of BIM is to replace elements like walls, not remodel them or redraw them. Um, you definitely want to be using sheets and viewports um, in order to have an efficient workflow. And then finally, when we come to collaborate and exchange information with other consultants, we'll be talking or looking at using the IFC data. Um, IFC stands for Industry Foundation Classes, by the way. Okay, so let's have a look at a design-based project. Then we'll come on to uh, maybe one that's more developed for construction. And then finally, we'll end off with a more collaborative, larger scale project. So we'll try and cover all, all areas. So this is um, my first project I want to show you. Um, it's basically very early day concept design for a new eco-dwelling in the open countryside. So I'll just skip through that one fairly quickly. And you can see initial kind of site analysis can be done in Vectorworks. So you don't really need, you know, Adobe InDesign or Photoshop to do this. And then we're moving on straight away to the proposed site plan. Now, it's quite a big replacement uh, dwelling um, for a client who, I won't go into the details, but what's important here is you can see clearly we're producing a nice, clear set of plans. <clears throat> now, I've turned the detail off in these walls so we can present them nice and clearly for planning stage. But later on, you'll see how we can turn them on. Now, the real beauty of modelling the building at an early stage is that you can essentially extract very nice rendered elevations uh, with shadows, materiality, and also that three-dimensional quality that is really quite hard to do when you're just drafting. And, you know, the huge advantage here is we don't mind making changes really late on. Um, and as soon as the client wants to make changes, that's absolutely fine because we've only got to adapt the model. Um, if we move the window on the plan, it will move on all of the relevant drawings, the plans, the LEs, the sections, and, of course, the perspectives. So here you can see a couple of the visuals, and in a minute I'm going to jump into Vectorworks and show you how I've structured this file there. But you can see it's a, a relatively contemporary dwelling um, for a single story um, kitchen dining area with a roof terrace, and then two story accommodation for the bedrooms, and obviously a nice double garage there. But quite contemporary around the back, and we decided to have a look at sinking the uh, terrace for the kitchen down into the ground because it's in a big open site to create a little bit of relief from the wind and also to anchor the building into its context. Now, I really love doing this. Um, I love using the save views in Vectorworks to create what I call a bit of a storyboard. Um, and this is something you'll see live in a minute when we skip through. So we can really tell the story, the client of approaching the building and you know even going sort of through to actually entering into some of the key spaces with a bit of furniture. Okay, so let's just skip out of the presentation for a moment and I'm going to jump into Vectorworks and I'm going to just show you this project. So you can see 
Up at the top, these are my sheets. So here's my 20 or so drawings that I laid out for initial presentation. But all of that is actually generated from the information on these layers here. So if we go to the ground floor model, let me just let Vectorworks update and render for a second. You'll see the geometry rendering up here. Okay, and let's just pop that into plan. So here we can see the plan here. And one of the real beauties is, as I've said before, if you turn the detail on or off, you can actually see that I've begun to develop some elements of a bit more detail in the cavities and the walls construction. So for planning stage, I can just hide that and turn that off. Now, if we pop it into 3D view, let me also just do one other thing. I'm going to take my visibility tool and I'm just going to turn off these additional heliodons. Um, I normally put four of those in so that when I actually create a rendered elevation, um, each elevation has its own shadows. Um, I'm also going to do one other thing to help. I'm going to go to set the render works background to none for a second. Okay. I think that'll be a little bit clearer while I'm working with the model. So you can see here is the ground floor. Now I've rendered it in basic OpenGL. And a little trick for you is that I've just turned on the lighting. I've got ambient occlusion on. And that gives you a nice sort of soft shadowing that you can use to kind of get a little bit more realism. And again, we can sort of brighten up or darken down the viewport. So all I've really done here is I've structured my model with a ground floor, which has an elevation of zero and actually goes up to three meters. Okay. Actually, that's not quite true because some elements here, if I turn on the site, you'll see actually the elevation is a little bit lower. And you could probably see that if I click on this wall here. In fact, you can. The bottom offset of that wall is minus 450. So while zero is, uh, is okay for the rest of the dwelling, because I wanted to set this down within the site, um, I've just dropped that area down locally. Okay, so if we go up to the first floor, if I turn that one on, you'll see... All we've done there is we've started the elevation at 2700 and we've moved the layer wall height up another couple of meters. Now I was keen to keep the walls low at the eaves and then have height within the roof for this particular design. Let's put the roof on and hopefully you can get a fairly good impression of the whole model if I spin around. So essentially what happens is all of these drawings you'll see are produced by obtaining different views. For example, a front view, a right view, and a back view. Of course, that will look quite dark at the moment because the heliodon for that elevation has been turned off. So a good little tip for you here is whenever you do your heliodons, put them in a separate layer. Um, so if you just don't want to show them, you know, when you're actually modeling, it's quite nice not to have the shadows on. Um, you turn them on and you get shadows, but also make sure that you use a number of classes so that you don't over light the project you see what I mean so it's important to be able to turn on and off the heliodons so you can just get the shadow required for that particular elevation a very nice simple little tip and you'll find that you can copy and paste that between files okay so if we have a quick look through the drawings you've seen these already so I'm quickly going to scroll through just to show you live in Vectorworks how rapidly they are. Now you're wondering what shortcut I'm doing maybe. So I'm doing command and the up and down arrow key to quickly cycle through. Uh, you can see on the plan here, I think I presented with a little bit of wiggle and wobble, a bit of sketch. You know, and that's kind of nice for the client because um, they can sort of see that the designs are clearly in development. Um, maybe you don't mind changing things. They're not the final drawings. So we can easily turn that on at any stage. So here's the elevations. You know, these are the kind of drawings that take ages to do if you're doing it manually by hand. And, you know, real pain to update once you come to modify the design. Now, again, these viewports here are essentially OpenGL. And a really nice little trick here is just to explode the views. So all you, all you really do is you, you duplicate the viewport, you drag a copy up, and you simply swap over what the viewport is actually kind of looking at. And you click the update button and wait for it to re-render the floor above. But it's a lovely little trick in terms of, you know, showing the client the relationship between the internal and the external space. And I think they, you know, clients really respond to these 3D floor plans in my view. So we can see a few more um, 
rendered 3Ds for here, and a floor plan. If you want like a rendered floor plan, that's easy enough to do. And of course, we come on now to the storyboard. So for the storyboard, I've actually got these as save views. So I can access these from up here, and I can literally, after showing the client, I can sort of you know drive them through the drawing. And a lovely little trick here is, as you're sort of moving through, you can go now to Vectorworks and you can turn off the palettes that you don't want to see. So make sure you try this next time you're presenting. So hide enabled palettes. Um, I definitely recommend learning the shortcut for that one. Okay, so you can see we can kind of drive up and don't worry, you know, learn how to drive. But if you do get lost, the nice thing is you can always skip through to another view. So Vectorworks does a really sweet little animation between the views. Um, and actually, there's a really nice little kind of tip where you can edit the script to modify the timing. So you can slow this down. Let's turn off that page boundary, make it a little bit clearer. So I would hope that, you know, if I've just shown you this design really for a few minutes, if you were the potential client here, you know, you get a very nice impression of what the design's all about. And actually one really great tip is, if you select the Heliodon outside, and then come back to this view, you can actually play through the different times and shadows of the day. Let me see if I, I can actually do that for you. Okay, so I've got that selected. Let's go back to that kitchen view. Here we go. Actually, let's change to the next one. Let's go to the dining view. Great. Now I will need to bring my palettes back here, so it's a good job I remembered the shortcut, hopefully. I did. So now I can actually go to solar animation and I can scroll through the different dates and times of the year. So literally, you know, great to sit with the client on the first meeting and say, look, there's, here's the reason I specified the orientation or, you know, this is why we've got some uh, solar shading available so that we can actually, um, you know, limit the amount of sunshine coming through at this particular time of the day. And here we've got the roof lights, you know, you just really kind of get them on board with the design ideas. And, uh, you know, obviously that's useful for doing some early stage energy analysis work as well. So let's carry on around the building. You can see it's very easy to jump from inside to outside um, and different sort of eye levels. But at any time, you know, if I want to, I can kind of pan around and sort of take over and do a bit of driving. So if the client says, you know, can we have a look at this bit? It's no problem at all. But it, I do find it very nice to have a pre-prepared sort of presentation to fall back on. Excellent. Okay, so I think you're getting a pretty good idea of the overall project. Um, we'll just go back to my last few views on the page because I did do some slightly higher quality renderings. Now, while OpenGL is super fast and it's almost real time, I do find that the odd, you know, GI rendering using um, final quality or, or probably custom render works um, with a few sort of tweak settings is a good is a good move. So you can get some nice kind of renders here. Uh, let's see if we've got one more. Yeah, that was quite a nice one with, um, that was where the Renderwitz background came in. It had a nice sort of subtle and soft lighting. Okay, and great. I think that's what I wanted to show you on this project. So what we'll do is we'll skip back to the presentation. And I'm just gonna kind of come back to the slideshow here. Now, this is another little bit of software I just wanted to mention briefly. Um, when you're creating your Vectorworks models and developing your initial ideas, sometimes it's really nice to give them a little bit more life and a little bit more, shall we say, context and sit them in the landscape. Now, a great bit of software that I found uh, I'm using with Vectorworks is called Twinmotion 2018. It's only been out on the Mac for a few months. And if you're interested, have a look at my channel. Um, Innovative Vectorwitz BIM on YouTube. There's some nice little videos I've been preparing there to explain how Twinmotion works with Vectorworks. It uh, works very well with SketchUp as well. But literally in the course of, um, you know, a very short space of time, maybe half an hour, 40 minutes, you can kind of add the life that really years ago would have taken uh, a lot of work in terms of animation or Photoshopping. So here's a couple of projects. This is uh, another project I've done, Swan Lodge. And it's really kind of nice, you know, just the effect of shadows. You've got the people moving and birds flying around. You know, really, really fun to use and really nice atmosphere. I'll just show you one more. 
uh, very, very much test animations as opposed to serious sort of project work. But I find playing around with software, you know, really fun. One of the best ways to actually learn. And also it enables you to kind of spot some glitches and then refine your workflow. So I definitely encourage you to download a free trial of Twinmotion and make sure you use it with your Vetwitz models to see how easy it is to add atmosphere to them. Okay, let's go back to our presentation. So the next project I wanted to show you is one that we developed for construction. Um, and this is one that I'm really proud of. Um, it's a beautiful new home um, for a site down in uh, North Devon where I used to live. And it's actually one that I'm proud of because, well, you know, it was built and getting projects built is, is you know, takes time. And it really was beautifully anchored into its local context. And I was so proud to win a BIM Project of the Year runner-up um, at the 2015 Construction Computing Industry Awards in London. And you can see a picture of me picking up the award. But great, you know, this was a project that was done quite a few years ago. And I have to say, it was my, my first sort of project where I'd used BIM right through the process from start to finish, particularly for construction and the building regs applications. So you can see they're much more detailed, this set of drawings. Um, and while we've got nice visuals and things for the client, you know, we can also cut sections through the model and actually look at the construction in a lot more detail. And here you can see what I've done is taken a viewport and annotated quite a bit of extra detail in at the time. Now, as my modeling skills have come on, um, I find that now I can model more and I don't need to do as much 2D annotation over the viewports. But for those of you a bit worried about the idea of BIM, this can be a nice um, approach in that you can only model up to maybe one to 50 level of detail and then you can easily just draft in the remaining information required. So let's have a quick look at this project on Vectorworks as well. I think it's nice to show you how the project was developed, but you can see absolutely incredible site, <clears throat> very near the cliff edge. Um, so it looks lovely on a day like today, but you know, a little bit scary in the middle of the winter, which is why we developed such a solid sort of um, stone plinth to the building to anchor it to its site. Hopefully the garden will be finished at some point. We can get some more photos, but yeah, really stunning spot. Let's have a quick look at that project in Vectorworks. And here we go, we're on Valley View. So you can see again, I'm using the same approach. Um, with my own projects, I tend to do quite a lot of drawings in one file. Now, when we talk about collaboration, we'll talk about how you can split them up. But you can see, I'll just quickly scroll through a few of the drawings. And again, you can see how you know wonderfully close to the cliff edge this project was. So not for everybody, but it was a, a truly beautiful site. Uh, at Lee Bay down in Devon. Now you can clearly see I'm doing very sort of detailed drawings here with the drainage. Um, I'm using the notes tool a lot. So the notes tool is something that I can double click on and if I've got all my building regs notes available essentially I can just quickly add those to the notes in the drawing and you can see hopefully now we've got a radon standard radon note added. So for those of you who've not started to use the general notes or the call out notes, I'd really recommend this as something to have a look at. And it's something on my training days I always talk about um, and I show practices how to set this up and they, they really do find this very, very beneficial. Another wonderful tool that I've often shown people and they didn't know about is um, basically a setting out tool. Now this is available from the site planning palette and essentially it's a little icon um, looks a bit like Glastonbury Tour, if you know that in the UK. But basically what it does, if I just double click into my annotations layer, it allows me to basically place coordinates. So I can either do X and Y coordinates, or if I prefer, I can swap that to northings and eastings. Um, and really great thing about those is they automatically update. So if you do move your origin point, they will all update dynamically. And again, often I've, I've shown practice how to use this and, you know, <laughs> their normal reaction is, oh my gosh, I've just spent like a week setting out a building uh, just last week. And we were doing it all manually. You know, they're typing in numbers and they're clicking on a loci and they're going to get data and then copying it in. So it's definitely a really straightforward tool. You can use the stake object next time you're using that. Okay, fantastic. So let's have a little look at the next few drawings. You can see much more detailed here. 
And I am using the detail viewports, which we'll come on to, which basically means I can pull off some quite nice construction details. And again, here's the call out tool again. Really nice tool. I can use the database if I want to, or I can just copy and type some information in. And here I am using it with keynotes. So basically when you click on the call out tool, you click place keynote here, and then it will drop down to be on the key of notes. So you can see I did a couple of different design options here for the gable. I'm just scrolling through these drawings. And yeah, let's get on to the sections. So these are the 3D sections. And again, if I double click into this section and go to annotations, I'll just select everything and let's go and cut away everything that was added. So, you know, there was some information added. Um, I did add a bit more information on the foundations, which I didn't, you know, didn't want to model. I've added some markers. I've added some kind of floor joists and roof joists, those kind of things. But really, you know, the background of the model is essentially giving me a lot of information for free. So let's show you how that works. I'm going to go over to my save views. And let's just move on to these detail viewports for a second. So detail viewports are fantastic in Vectorworks in that basically we can apply them and we can then blow up the level of detail. So I think it's just doing a little update. Here we go. So here is the detail viewport. That refers to a specific sheet of details, wall details. And there is the, there is the building or the detail, should we say, referenced. And again, there is an annotations layer there as well. So if I take away what I've added, you can see I've added a bit more dimensions, um, some more notes, and you know even things like wall details and so on if I need to. So it's a great strategy. Model up to one to fifty level. You know, eventually maybe one day the goal will be one to twenty-five or one, even more in certain areas of the building. But that's enough for now. Um, you can pick off certain areas of the project in a bit more detail and model those up as well. Okay, so I want to show you something fantastic called the Clip Cube. Um, for those of you who have not seen this, it really is a really useful tool. So here is the model of the project. And you can see I've even modelled the uh, the foundations. Um, <laughs> obviously, being on the cliff top, the, the ground wasn't you know the most stable. So we did have a large amount of engineering going into the ground. Um, we had these great big 22 piles and ground beams all around the building. So it really was quite an engineering feat. But that was just simply modelled using a layer. Here we go. Look, I can turn that on and off. Ground beams. And it's just a separate design layer. Okay, so in 3D, let's click on to the Clip Cube. And you can see that the wonderful thing with the Clip Cube is I can basically scroll through the project and have a look at it at any position. So here's quite a nice spot here, just below the ridge. I'm going to right click, create section viewport. And what I'll do is I'll go and basically put that onto <clears throat> a new sheet layer. Let's just call this 100 sections. Click OK. I think I'm going to blow it up to 1 to 50 scale. And I'm just going to click OK and wait for a moment while it uh, essentially processes that section. You can see the progress down there. Wow, it's already done. So basically, even without any additional work, you know, I've got this background that I can use. Now I can go into my settings and I can do some quite nice things here. For example, the line render, I can tell that to be in a class called section behind. I might just need to update this in a moment and click update. And can you see how the lines have greyed out into a lighter, thinner pen? So now, without much extra sort of work, if I want to, I could view that in perspective, that section. And let's go for a depth of about five meters or five. I'll click update, wait for a moment. And here we go, we've got a perspective section. So that gives you a really nice impression of the model. And let's just copy this down. We're lacking a little bit of space down here, but that's okay. I can essentially click reverse direction, click update, to get the other section. So hopefully that's been really interesting in that, it, for me, it encapsulates one of the concepts of BIM 
in that I can essentially turn on and off information within a viewport, but also I can extract coordinated drawings from that viewport in a very rapid space, space um, of time. And this is really useful. Another nice little trick is we can annotate the plan. So if I go and copy my ground floor plan for a second, let's just copy that viewport there. And let's paste that onto the section sheet. It's going to be quite a lot of information coming through. Let's paste that there. And let's shrink that down. And let's filter it what we're going to see. So I'm just going to click layers. And I'm basically going to just turn on the ground outline clearly way too much information there so I'd really want to use my visibility tool if I was doing this properly to actually turn on and off some classes let's see if we can get that working sort of simplify the project a little bit yeah there we go that's a bit better isn't it <clears throat> so fantastic tool you can see me using that in the viewport that's what I was after so basically if I click on uh, the particular section I'm interested in what I can do is, if I know the name of that viewport there, which is uh, GF151, let's maybe call that key plan. Click on the section, section line instances, and then rather than showing the section on the, the design layer, I essentially can just turn it on on the key plan. And I think it's going to be in one of those invisible classes, which is a bit annoying. I've turned off. So let's just turn those on. In fact, what I'll do here is a little trick. I'll hold seven down just so I can see all the classes. And there we go. There's the markers. They were. They were in a hidden class. So I want to go to show, click, and then I should have my markers on. Okay, sorry about that. But you can see how effectively that marker is positioned. Now, if I double click, and I go to annotations, that is just an annotation, so I can easily change the style of the marker. And if I click and move, I can basically re-update the section. So let's move to, I'll tell you what, let's just go to a completely different position, just to show you how this works. So if I click update now, you should find, I've got the, uh, rather than the longitudinal section, I've got the shorter section through the mezzanine. And that's worked really nicely. So, you know, a great example of BIM workflow, one of the benefits is this coordinated set of drawings we're getting when we move the plan section line, you know, the sections we've created will update. Okay, so we'll leave this project for a moment, but we'll just sort of finish off with another couple of views here. And again, you can see with safe views, it really is easy to create a very um, attractive presentation. Oh, and I did just want to mention scheduling as well. You know, one of the big benefits for me in my small practice with BIM is that I can easily schedule off um, a lot of information very rapidly. So things like doors and window schedules are, you know, no-brainers to me. Maybe roof light schedules um, and also maybe sometimes area schedules and sometimes quantity of things like how many timbers are required for the project. Finally, I also quite like doing electrical drawings in a nice little way. So here I've got something called a hyperlink um, and if I click edit, you'll see what the hyperlink will do. So if I hold the command key down and I click, basically, oh, there we go, the hyperlink's broken. That's because I've moved the electrical drawing, I believe. Let's see if we can relink it. Electrical drawings, there we go. Let's relink it now, see if this works. Okay, so if I hold down command and I click, essentially Vectorworks will do what I asked it to do and open up the drawing. That's excellent. Now here you can see a worksheet which kind of live tracks how many um, electrical symbols I've got on the drawing. So if I do make any changes and place a few more spotlights, then all I need to do is go to that schedule and essentially double click and basically recalculate. So as soon as I've made some changes, that's excellent. So a really, really nice way to keep track of your um, amount of electrics or well it can be anything actually any kind of symbols very easy to do really powerful fantastic right so we'll leave this project for now and we'll move on to uh, the next project which was a large collaborative project 
So I just really want to make the point, VetWitz is great for design, for, for construction, but also for collaboration as well. So very, very different scale of project. Now this was Build Live New York, <clears throat> and it was a truly global team, you can see down here on the right. Um, basically, we had lead architects in the D Dominican Republic, we had people in Japan looking at airflow and simulation, we had um, some people in America helping us as well on the BIM design team, and quite a few of us, myself and Martin Horn from the UK, um, were working on the modeling, the visualization, and Martin was working on coordination. Basically, the idea of the competition is only 48 hours to take a brief and design and collaborate and get as far as you can with the design and the presentation of a project. <clears throat> so it was a very large site, big urban um, context, which was essentially an IFC model that we were able to import. And very rapidly, we were able to work up the design, <clears throat> you know, working through these 48 hours. So when we finished, we would hand over our vector works or IFC models to the rest of the team so that they could uh, carry on with the design development. But you can see we came up with a really nice design, quite a striking 60-story tower block. I think, you know, 48 hours design work, this is a really beautiful design. Um, I've seen, gosh, you know, so many buildings that don't look anything like as good as this that probably took a lot longer to, to you know, create and design. But, you know, what was interesting for us was about how we used Vectorworks to communicate and collaborate with the team. Now, here you can see um, some shadow studies being done, which was very easy to do using Renderworks, just using the solar animation option of the Heliodon. <clears throat> but there were useful um, studies in terms of looking at the shading, the building on surrounding buildings in the park, but also, you know, the solar shading on the building itself. Here we can see um, some analysis that was done from our model that was imported as an IFC Industry Foundation Classes model. And, you know, this was done looking at the airflow around the project. So again, nice early stage analysis, which actually did lead to, you know, the reason why we had this apron around the building <clears throat> was to kind of really um, mitigate the, you know, the extreme airflow that could have been provided if we didn't have that feature. Here we can see the model in um, Celebri Model Viewer, which is a great application for viewing and sort of verifying your IFC models before you maybe issue them to other consultants, but also so you can help understand what they're sending you <clears throat> before you kind of perhaps import it straight into Vectorworks. Here we can see another analysis, more of a spatial analysis. The previous one was more of a structural analysis, looking at the beams and the slabs and the columns. But here we can see the spaces with all, all the kind of color coding and the scheduling taken from the model. So I'll just kind of skip into that project for a moment. Let's see if we can open that one up. Close this one down. I don't think we'll save that one. Let's close this one down as well. And bear with me while I open this one because it really is a truly, truly huge project. But it will give you a bit of an insight into how we can work on very large. So this is 340 megabytes, this project. So we'll click and open. So, you know, over the last couple of years, Vectorworks has sort of been working very hard under the bonnet as well as sort of with the new features that everybody sees. And really, you know, the conversion to 64-bit was something that really made Vectorworks, in my view, capable of handling very, very large files. So let's see if we can skip to the project itself. You can see it's just doing the geometry rendering. So it always takes an initial moment or two to render out the project to begin with. There we go. And we've got the context here. So we can have a look, quick look at the context. And here is the building. Now the building has actually been referenced. So this was designed obviously by the architects. They gave us the model uh, via Dropbox we were able to then reference it into our project. So if their model updates, our project will update. So this is one of the simplest ways that you can collaborate using Vectorworks. You can reference out your models. And Vectorworks essentially can reference not only Vectorworks files, but it can actually reference DWG files as well. So that's a very straightforward way to collaborate. Now, in the last few years, Vectorworks has also added a wonderful feature called project sharing. Now, I'm not going to show you that now, but for those of you on bigger projects, project sharing makes, should we say, collaboration 
uh, within a design team much more seamless. Okay, so I'm going to click on the clip cube and see what happens if we try to section this very large model. Okay, so you can see I'm literally able to go through in real time. Have a look at this building. Let's pull back a tiny bit here. Yeah, let's come back a little bit on there. Just about there is a nice spot for the section. Right click. And again, I'm going to create a section viewport. I really just want to show you this, you know, to get the impression that Vectorwiz is not just for small projects. It's for small, medium, and very large projects these days. Um, so let's go and create a new sheet. Click OK. Sit back, wait for a moment or two, and hopefully, you know, in the time you've, well, maybe not even had a cup of coffee, but <laughs> in the time that you've kind of been talking for a few moments with a colleague, checking a few emails, you've basically created a drawing that would have taken absolutely hours to do by hand. And the real beauty is it's live linked. So we're nearly there, just getting to the end of the sectioning geometry. And the, the great thing is here, we're not afraid to keep developing the design. You know, with traditional workflow, once you've kind of got to a certain point, you have to sign off the design development and start on the presentation and production information. But really with the, uh, the Vectorist modeling workflow, we just don't need to do that. So hopefully that spinning wheel is going to come on. It's just on its final stage of processing. But let's, you know, let's be fair. This is a, a 60 story tower building with a huge amount of information embedded. There we go. So absolutely stunning, you know, really nice drawing of the project. You can see we can easily blow this up to whatever scale we like. We can render it in different ways and put some perspective on. But, you know, I think that just shows the power of the modeling. So if we see if we've got a few save views. Yeah, we have. You know, the final thing that was really particularly useful on this project was the shadow studies. And again, this is something that, you know, you always have to do on bigger projects. So if we can go and select my heliod on, to do, to do that, I'm going to go to the visualization palette. And that means I can actually force select the heliodon. Fantastic. And essentially, look, I can scroll through any date and time of the year to any day, any location. Obviously, we're in New York, but any time of the year. So what we'll do, we'll go back to the final presentation. And essentially, I'm just going to finish off with, you know, my little kind of pitch for what, you know, why you should get into 3D and BIM. Well, you know, I've been doing Vectorworks for a long time. And essentially, back then, images like this would have taken, you know, days, days to produce, like weeks to model and then days to render. So these days, the barrier is not the hardware or the software. The hardware and the software are, are more than capable of producing incredible renders and animation in a short space of time. What I find is it's essentially the skills and, you know, one of the things I really would recommend to you is invest in yourself. Um, learn through the tutorials, learn through the help system. And of course, best of all, maybe, you know, get some tuition, some one-to-one -one or group tuition from uh, somebody else who's a Vectorworks expert. I'd be very pleased to help work with any of you if you're interested. But really, you know, invest in yourself and your skills as well as your hardware and your software. So I really do hope you've enjoyed the talk. Um, obviously, I can't answer any questions directly, but you know, please leave a like and subscribe into the channel. If you've got any quick questions, I'll, I'll try and answer some of them. But overall, um, I hope you've enjoyed this presentation and thank you for listening. So my name was Jonathan Reeves from Jonathan Reeves Architecture and I'm a professional Vectorworks teacher and trainer and I will look forward to working with any of you in the future. Thank you for listening. Goodbye.